Welcome back to Godot 101. This is part 12. And in this video, we're going to explore how to add a scrolling camera that follows your player and also make a scrolling background. All right, let's get started. So here we have our simple platformer setup. And so now I want to take a look at what would happen if we had our screen laid out like this. I'm going to duplicate this platform a couple more times. And I'm going to move them and just sort of arrange them kind of like this, right? So now my, I want my character to be able to run along and jump on all four of these platforms. But of course, these are going to be off the screen, right? When we run it, we can't see those. And I would just go off the screen and that's no good. So I want to have a camera that will follow the player wherever it goes in the game world. And that's really easy to do with Godot because we have a camera node. Here's our player scene. We're going to hit add and we're going to add a camera 2D. This is the camera 2D node. The camera 2D, we're going to, I'm going to rename it to camera. And all we need to do on this node to get it to work is go down here and check the box next to it that says current. Right, we want current to be on. And you could have multiple cameras in your scene but only one of them can be the current one, and that's the one that you know the, the view window will track. So if we hit play now, we can already see that now the screen is scrolling as we move along. Couldn't get easier, right? So it's very simple to, to just set up and, and use the camera. Now there's lots of settings on the camera things like dragging and things like that. And that's sort of how, how you want the camera to act, right? So for example, if I turn on smoothing here, right? So now instead of the camera tracking my player instantly, it's gonna slowly catch up. So you see when I move the camera just sort of pans along and catches up to me. So it just smooths, smooths that movement out and you can, set the speed for how, how quickly that movement happens and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can, in the drag margin here, you can set how far from the edges you want the character to be able to walk before the camera starts scrolling, right? And you can set those to zero and have it not even work, right? You could have it only scroll side to side, not, not do the up and down scrolling like this. There's a lot of things you can play with and I recommend you 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 mess around with these right you can turn on and off these things try try changing the different settings around and see how it works and how you can customize it to give you the look that you want for your game once you have the camera working the way you want it now we need to talk about what do we do about the background because you can see obviously we scroll far enough we get past the edges of the background and we don't see it anymore so if we look at our main scene here our background image is this, this is the size of it. So if we want it to extend, we can, there's a couple things we could do. You could obviously take another, take the sprite and duplicate it and put another one next to it, right? And then you would see it. But rather than do that, we're gonna take advantage of the fact that this, this piece of art was drawn in such a way that it is tileable, that the, the left-hand edge and the right-hand edge, uh, if you put them right next to each other, uh, there's no, transition, all right? They meet up well, so it, it's designed to be to be tiled horizontally. So if we look at our texture here, we can go we can click the little right arrow and go to the flag section. And if we go down here, we make sure we have repeat selected. You might not on yours, but if you have repeat selected, that tells it that this is a repeatable texture. And now if we go back here and turn region to on, right, now my background disappeared because it became really small because the region rectangle by default is set to zero width and zero height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the height to the height of the image, which is 1536. That's how, how tall the original texture is. And for the width, the width is 3072. Right, so if I set that, there we have our original image back. Right? But if I wanted to tile further, I can just make this width larger. Right? If I multiply it by 4, 
then the image is going to become four times wider. And because the repeat flag is on, we will see the image just repeating over and over again. Right? And then you can also drag that to where you want it to be. Right? If we want to place it so that there's plenty of image to the left so that you don't see any gray when the player is all the way on the left hand side of the platform here, but also when they get over here to the right, they still will see the background. And that's going to look fine. But there's one more improvement we can make, right? As well as having the background scrolling back there, it would look even cooler if it scrolled at a slightly slower speed than our player moves. And this is called parallax scrolling. It makes it look like the things in the background are a much farther distance away. So they'll only scroll a little bit as you move from side to side. So if I go back here and go to add node and I search for parallax, you can see we have two different nodes that come up, the parallax background and the parallax layer. And so what you do to set this up is you use the parallax background. So we're going to add that. Okay. And to that parallax background, we're going to add a parallax layer. Now, parallax backgrounds can have multiple layers because what that lets you do is have you know, different different layers scrolling at different speeds and things like that to get really, really advanced looking effects. But we will put the background now into that parallax layer. Okay, so now our background is part of the parallax layer. And we can go here and say what we, how we want it to move, right? How we want it to change. And for example, under motion, we can choose what scale we want to use. Right. If we put this to zero, the pop-up tells us right here, if the axis is set to zero, it will not move at all. It'll stick with the camera. So it won't change. But right now we have it set to one. So let's see what happens when we run it. Right. It looks pretty much the same, right? But if we set this to half, now the motion is scaled at half the speed that the camera moves. Now do you see that? See how the, the background is scrolling much slower. Right, it's very nice looking effect, very easy to create. That looks really cool. And that's it. So feel free to play around with this. You know, if you change the change the scale and and how it runs, if you, you know, I change it to point two here, right, and then it looks like it's hardly moving at all, running all the way across all four platforms, barely moves that background very much, so it makes it feel like it's much farther away in the distance. And if you want to add wanted to add another parallax layer in between, you could have that scroll by at a still different speed. Feel free to experiment. I hope it all made sense to you. Please post in the comments below if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.